Hi, and welcome back. This is Jennifer McGuire, and I'm glad you've joined me for today. I'm going to be sharing some fun ideas for using your die cuts to create your own masks or stencils. If you like making one layer cards or one layer backgrounds, this is definitely a technique for you. I will show you a few different examples, so hopefully you can try it with some products that you have at home. I even show how to do this technique with layering dies. Okay, let's get started with this example first. For all of my masking today, I'll be using the Gina K Designs Masking Magic product. You could use any masking paper, but I prefer this one because it is high quality and will hold up through multiple uses. It also die cuts beautifully with intricate dies and doesn't tear as easy as most masking papers. From this masking paper, I am die cutting the new Simon Says Stam Hibiscus Bloom die. This is a large, beautiful detailed die that really is great for this technique. I'm carefully removing the release paper from the back of our masked hibiscus, and I'll place this onto a piece of white cardstock that is four and a quarter by five and a half. This is Nina Classic Crest Solar White. Any smooth, heavyweight white cardstock will work. In fact, honestly, any white cardstock would work for this technique. I just like to use a smooth one because it makes ink blending easier. And I like heavyweight just for a quality card. Okay, so now I have my mask down. Once I'm happy with the position to really press it in place, I put another piece of cardstock on top and use a bone folder and that really smooths it out and adheres it to your paper. I'm just going to wrap the extra ends around the back just so they're out of the way. Okay, so now we have our mask there on our white cardstock. It's time to add color. I have a piece of purple tape here that's just going to hold this down on my desk as we do our inking. It's the only purpose of it there. Now I'm using Tim Holtz Distress Oxide ink in a few different colors along with a blending brush. I'm putting this color down pretty heavily, starting light-handed at first and building up. You could use any inks that you want here. It really doesn't matter. You could use dye inks, pigment inks, anything. I'm using Distress Oxide inks because they're incredibly easy to blend, much easier than other inks. So that's why I reach for them whenever I do an inked or, or an ink blended background. Now to add more interest over this, I thought I would use the new Simon Says Stamp Radiant Heart Stencil and add some white ink. So we're just layering up ink on the back. So the white ink will just soften in any of the areas open on the stencil. So I'm using Here Art's Unicorn White Pigment Ink. And I'm taking some of it onto a blending brush that I use just for white pigment ink. And then I'm putting lots of that white ink onto my glass media mat. That's the work surface I work on. Then I'm taking my brush onto this stencil and applying a heavy layer of white over it. Every time I need warm, more white ink, I go over to the white ink that's on my work surface. The reason I put the ink on my work surface is I think I'll probably pick up some of the pink from the background. And I don't want to take that pink ink onto my white ink pad by accident. It would be okay if I did. I could probably wipe it off. But just to be sure, I put the ink on my glass work surface and I can easily pick it up from there. I then wiped away the excess with a dry cloth. And now I'm going to use the same dry cloth to remove any like little puddles of ink that formed in the corners of the stencil. And there you can see the soft look that we get on the background. I could have put more ink if I wanted that white to stand out more, but I was going for a soft look. Now I can carefully remove the mask that we created and check out that fun one layer look. It has the look of dimension because we did the masking and then has lots of interest in the background thanks to multiple colors of the Distress Oxide ink and the white ink stenciling. Now it's time to do the Thinking of You border die cut. For this I'm using the new Simon Says Stamp Thinking of You line die. Notice that the word thinking is actually a die that cuts along a line. So here's the trick for doing that. I like to cut a strip of black cardstock partially. So watch, I'm going to just cut it partially down. Didn't go all the way. Now I'm going to take the thinking word line die and line up the line of the die with that cut edge. So see right next to the G, there's a little bit that sticks out. I'm lining that up with the edge that we just cut. 
So now when I run this through my die cut machine, we'll end up with a thin border strip along with the word thinking attached to the top. I think that's a great way to create a unique border. Now I have a piece of white cardstock and right along the edge, I'm putting some liquid adhesive, it's Gina K Connect, and then adding the border of the word thinking. So I'll flip it over to make sure I have it on there straight. So the word thinking is hanging off the top of our white cardstock and the black uh, strip is glued right along the top edge. I trimmed the excess off the ends, and now it's time to trim this down. It's way too tall. So I'm placing it where I think I want it to be on my card, making a little mark where to cut it. I use anything to make a mark, a pencil, a little craft knife, scissors, my thumbnail, anything. Made a little mark there, and now I'm using my Tim Holtz trimmer to cut that right along the bottom. Now I want my thinking word and this piece that we're adding to have some dimension to it. I like my sentiments to have dimension behind them so they stand out more. So I die cut the word thinking twice more from black cardstock. Sorry, my head gets in the way there. And then I glued it to the back of the word thinking. That way it has some raised dimension. Don't worry, we'll put some additional cardstock behind the white portion too. Right now I'm just working on the thinking. I didn't want that floating there because I was afraid it would get damaged. Now I've cut uh, three pieces of white cardstock that are a little bit smaller than the white panel underneath the word thinking. I've glued these three pieces together. I'll glue that right to the bottom of our inked panel and then glue this right on top. You could use foam tape or craft foam here, but I've been using scraps for building up dimension lately. I find it's a great way to use up those small pieces, and it makes it stronger when it goes through the mail. I also cut a really thin piece of silver glitter cardstock, super thin, and I have my T-roller right along the black strip. I'm running liquid adhesive along the T-roller, leaving the T-roller there, and then putting that silver cardstock strip right up against the edge of my T-roller. And that adds a very straight silver sparkle line right under the word thinking. Next, I have the words of you from the same thinking of you line die set. I die cut those from black cardstock, layered two or three of them together and added it to my card. Now I'm going to glue my inked panel on the front of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding note card. You could have done your inking and masking directly onto a note card, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to do that, so I ended up gluing it onto one. Here I'm adding some silver gemstones from Lucy's Cards using Gina K Connect and my Jewel Picker. I thought this would be a nice way to add sparkle. So here's a look at the completed card. I forgot to mention that the black cardstock that I used is Tim Holtz Black Matte Alcohol Ink cardstock. It's meant for using with alcohol ink, but it's got this smooth black velvety look to it that I think is really nice on cards, especially for sentiments. So that's what I use for my black die cutting. Here you can see that inked background that we got that's perfectly smooth. A great technique for a one layer card. I could have just inked up the whole panel, stamped a greeting on it, left off the accents and had a great smooth one layer card. But you know me, I like to build up as many layers as I can. By the way, I did stamp a sentiment on my matching envelope and that is from the new Simon Says Stamp Greeting Mix 2 stamp set. Here's a look at that new stamp set. Many wonderful sentiments in here. A lot of unique ones, such as I thought of you while making this card, healing hugs, happier days are coming, and so on. So I would encourage you to take a closer look at this set because it's got a little bit of something for everyone. Okay, my next example uses a layered die set, whereas the hibiscus bloom was just a single die. In this case, I used a You Have My Heart die set that has the words and the shadow die. This is new from Simon Says Stamp, and I really love the look of this. Before, they had one that says You Are Loved, and I've used it so often, so I'm excited to see another in the same style. I'm cutting both of these from the Gina K Masking Magic Paper. Here I have the negative space piece, and I'm just temporarily taping it onto my white cardstock that is four and a quarter by five and a half. I just tried to center that uh, shadow space right on the center of my card. So it's not actually stuck there, just there temporarily, so I know where the center of my card is, so I can place this intricate You Have My Heart die cut mask right in the center of it. 
by putting down the negative space first, I can kind of make sure that I'm centering this and I'm not letting any of the letters go wonky. So once I have that center mask in there, I just put a piece of cardstock on it and then press it down. And now I can remove the outside piece, which we're gonna save for later, and then put the cardstock back on and press down once again, as, so, as soon as I'm sure all my letters look nice and straight. Rubbing the bone folder over the cardstock does make a huge difference. Next, I'm using uh, different colors of Distress Oxide ink to apply a heavy amount of color over this. I like to do this on my Waffle Flower Watercolor Media Mat because it kind of holds or grips the cardstock so I don't get fingerprints on it. I started with that new beautiful speckled egg color, then I added additional colors, which I had on the top of the screen there. I'm just building up as much color in different spots as I want. You could do a rainbow, you could do stenciling, anything you want here. I decided just to do a heavy background of Distress Oxide ink so I could sprinkle some water on it and get some cool effects. Okay, once I was done with that, I'm taking my negative space piece that we just had temporarily taped there, gonna remove the release paper from it and actually put it onto our background. So I'm lining it up with the sentiment that's already on there. The first mask is still there. So now I have one mask under the ink and one on top. Pressing that down, and now I'm going to apply more ink over this so it'll stand out more. So this is Salty Ocean Distress Oxide Ink. I find using blending brushes works really well over masks and stencils, so that's why I chose to use that. Okay, now I'm going to heat set this. The reason I heat set between changing out my mask and such is because masks don't like to stick on wet ink, so if you dry it, it helps quite a bit. Now I have the center piece of my shadow mask, and I'm going to put it right into the opening. So basically, we're covering up that blue ink we just put on. So now everything's covered. Now we can remove the negative space, and now just that ink portion is covered in the middle. Now I'm going to splatter some water over this. Now you could do all kinds of things here. You could stamp, you could stencil, all the things I've mentioned before. But what I decided to do was just use a paintbrush and some water to just put splatter of dots on the background. Because remember, Distress Oxide Ink reacts when it comes in contact with water. I also put some Distress Oxide ink on my glasswork surface, added some water to it, and picked that up with my brush so I could do a little bit of splatter with color too. I even took my white unicorn pigment ink, put some water with that, got that on my paintbrush, and did splatters with that. This is a great way to get white splatter. If you want your white splatter to be more intense, use less water. If you want it to be softer, use more water. Once I was happy with what I created, I removed that mask. And then I'm going to remove the mask behind that too. So now you can see this is completely one layer, but it looks like multiple layers. Now I'll be honest, at this point I wished that blue around the white stood out more. So here is the solution I came up with. I didn't want to give up on this, so I put the shadow mask back on. And now I'm just putting a little bit of white pigment ink around the edge of this mask just a little bit with a blending brush, and I'll even wipe some of it away. But by putting this white highlight around this mask, it'll make the blue underneath it stand out even more. So I wipe some of the excess away, remove it, now the blue stands out more and I'm much happier. I did decide to go and add a few more speckles to it because remember I added white on it, covered up some of my speckles or my splatter, so I added a bit more in. And there we have the blue standing out much more. Okay, now I wanted to heat emboss a sentiment underneath this. So I'm using my Misty stamping tool. I made sure my background was completely dry. I used my anti-static powder tool and stamped the sentiment with white, or with, I'm sorry, with Versamark ink. It's just a clear ink. Off screen there, I'm adding white embossing powder to it and I'll heat set it. And that will stand out nice and bright along with the white masking that we did. I added a white heart die cut to the center of the word you, and then some white Arctic blizzard pearls from Studio Katia. I really like those. Kind of scattered those around. By the way, I did trim the background down to four by five and a quarter, and it's added to a white note card that's four and a quarter by five and a half. 
Now this background is completely smooth. I could have left the pearls off and kept this to be one layer, but I decided to add the accents. You could get a similar look by just building up the layers of die cut, but there's something special about having that smooth inked background. Okay, let's do another example using a layered die set and also incorporate some stamping, stenciling, and inking on the background. Now for this one, I'm using the new CZ Design Thank You Extra Large die set. You can see you've got the word thank you that's really large and the shadow die included in the set. I'll be cutting both of these from the same Masking Magic from Gina K as I did before. Here I have a piece of the Masking Magic cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. And I position the thank you right in the center of it. So this is masking paper that I'm cutting from here. It's helpful to have it centered for this card. Now I'm removing half of the release paper and adding it to a piece of white cardstock that is the same size. I'll remove the rest of the release paper and continue to press it down. That way I know the word thank you is centered on my white note card. I put the little centers of my letters in place and pressed it down. And now I'm adding a heavy amount of ink over the word thank you. So I'm using picked raspberry, mustard seed, and peacock feathers. I found that when you put these three inks down and allow them to overlap quite a bit, you get a rainbow. Where the pink and yellow overlap, you get orange. Where the yellow and blue overlap, you get green. So it's a really quick way to get a rainbow. Okay, so I put that down as heavy as I could. Now I'm removing the mask, removing the centers, and there we have the words inked. Now I have a mask that I created using the shadow die cut. So now I'm just lining up around the inked thank you that we have. I'm then popping the shadow mask in the center. So the only reason I put the negative space mask there is to make sure I position this perfectly around the inked thank you. So now I'm going to remove that outside mask. And there we have that covering our, up our ink thank you. This time, instead of the word being white, like on the last example, the little shadow area around the word will be white with this example. Just another way to use the dies. Okay, so now I'm going to ink up my background in the same manner that I did for inking up the words, but I'm going lighter this time. I wanted the word thank you to stand out a lot, but I wanted my background to kind of go along with it. So I'm using the same three colors, overlapping them like before, but putting down a much lighter amount of ink this time. Once I was done with that, I thought it'd be fun to stamp on it too. This is the new Simon Says Stamp Thank You Text Background. I love their text backgrounds and I'm excited about this one. I'm putting a little bit of temporary adhesive on the back of our inked background so I can line it up with our stamp. See how I'm lining up to make sure I'm stamping straight? Then I close my Misty upside down, flip it over, and now it's temporarily adhered inside of our Misty and I'll know I stamp on it straight. I'm stamping with Hero Arts Soft Granite Ink. I thought a soft uh, gray ink would look nice over this. I wanted to stamp it a little more clear, so I'm stamping it again, but this time I switched to Simon Says Stamp Fog Ink, which is lighter. By double stamping the soft granite, it would have gotten too dark. Okay, so now I remove that mask, and there we have uh, a stamped inked background around our inked letters. Now, I decided that wasn't enough. I tend to go overboard. So I put the mask back on, the shadow mask back on, and now I have the Simon Says Stamp Geo Leave Stencil. And I've taped it in place over that. And now I'm adding a little more color over the stencil that matches up with the color in the background. So a little more of the pink, a little more yellow, and a little more blue. Not too much. I just wanted to have a little bit of this pattern over the stamping and kind of around our thank you masked area in the center. So now when I remove the stencil and then remove the mask, we have this layered background. So there's a lot of look of dimension and layering there, but it's perfectly smooth. So I trimmed that background down to four by five and a quarter and added it to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. I also added some little clear raindrops on the background. And then I stamped the sentiment for all you do below the word thank you. I thought that pulled it all together nicely. That for all you do is from this new Simon Says Stamp 
Work of the Heart stamp set. This is a large 6x8 stamp set that has lots of images and sentiments that are great for making cards for people in the healthcare industry, especially during what we're going through. I'll be using this stamp set a lot. And I thought that thank you and that for all you do would be perfect for this card too. Okay, for this next card, I used a die to create a mask that I use multiple times on the background. For this, I used a few new products that I'm really excited about. I actually requested these from Christina Warner, and I think they turned out so amazing. We have the Simon Says Stamp Center Cut Hexagon Floral Stamp on the left, and the center actually comes out so you can stamp it with or without it. On the right, we have the Simon Says Stamp Hexagon Greeting Stamp Set. This is great because these greetings fit in that opening on the background. And then there is the coordinating die that you could use with either. And I'll be using that coordinating die to create masks. Okay, so let's start by stamping our background. Putting this into my MISTI stamping tool, I have a piece of white cardstock that is four and a quarter by five and a half, putting a little adhesive on the back, lining it up with the pattern on the stamp. I wanna to try to center this the best I can. Then I will close my MISTI upside down on it press down, flip my MISTI over, and now my stamp on my paper positioned so that I'll get a nice placement. I used my anti-static powder tool, and then I stamped that with Versamark ink. And now I'm adding Gina K white detail embossing powder. Uh, since this is a very detailed background, I thought the detail embossing powder would be good. And then I heat set it. Then I created a mask from the Masking Magic paper and that hexagon coordinating die. I'm going to place this around one of the white heat embossed hexagons on our background. It's hard to see in the video, but you'll see it as soon as I apply some ink. I did put purple tape around it so that I wouldn't get ink off the side of my mask since I cut it so small. Now I'm applying Distress Oxide ink over the openings. I tried to put the ink heavier towards the bottom and lighter towards the top. Then I buff it with a dry cloth to remove the excess ink off of the white embossing. I then move my mask to the next uh, hexagon, line it up, add some ink, wipe it off, and then repeat the process. So I used different colors and blue and green Distress Oxide ink. Again, you could use any dye or pigment inks here that you want. Distress inks would work great for this also. I just choose the Distress, Distress Oxide ink because they're easy to blend. Okay, so now I'm going to repeat this, covering the entire background with ink. Once I was done, I took one of the sentiments and I lined it up in the center and stamped it with black ink. That gave me a very smooth one layer background. But you know me, I like to layer things up. So I decided to die cut a few white hexagons and put the black sentiment on top of the layered hexagon and add that to the center. So there is a bit of layer there, but I could have left it one layer if I wanted. I also added some Arctic Blizzard Studio Katia pearls to the intersections of the hexagons just to add some interest. But you could definitely have made this a one card wonder. I trimmed it down, added it to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. Now notice I stamped a fun greeting on my matching envelope here. I always like to do that so that it's ready to hit the mail. And that is from this new Simon Says Stamp Crafty Bunny stamp set. This is a fun set because it has lots of crafty images so you can create a scene. There are stamps, dies, a rolling cart, and even a little die cut machine. All right, there you have a bunch of different ways to use your dies to create masks, to create smooth inked backgrounds. Now, there are many ways you could do this and you could keep it one layer if you wanted to and I hope you'll give it a try. If you are interested in the different products that I used here, they are linked in my YouTube description below. And in the middle are a couple other videos that I hope are helpful. Thank you for spending this time with me. I hope you're all staying well and we'll see you again soon.